Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 60. If you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 6.xlsm, click on the link below the video. In the last couple of videos, we've been talking about the normal curve probability. We did probability less than or equal to the x, greater than or equal to x. We looked at how to chart them, all the different functions. In this one, we want to do the between. What's the probability between an x? Uh, an, a lower x and an upper x, and if we change it, uh, we want to be able to calc the prob calculate the probability and see the chart change. All right, we're using our same example we've been using for many videos based on past data. Estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistics test that will be between 10 and 14 if mu is 12 and sigma is 2. Now, of course, as we've mentioned in all the videos, the only reason we can use the normal bell-shaped distribution for our probability calculations is because past population data has had a distribution that tends to be bell-shaped. All right, let's create our chart just as we've done in the last two videos. We're going to create our chart first to show the probabilities, and then we'll use our functions to calculate and see what kind of conclusions we can come to. Now, this situation is slightly different. This is going to involve two x's, right? A lower and an upper. So when we get to our formulas, we're actually going to have to use two functions. And when we get to our charting, we're going to have to do the same norm.dist for our base chart. But when we get to our extra uh, between area, we're going to have to not use just, we're going to use the if function just like we did in past functions, but we're also going to have to use the AND function. Let's just look at what I mean by AND. Let's ask this question. What's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 10? Now, this is notation you might see in a math class. Notice the x is in the middle. The greater than symbol is pointing towards the x, so the x has to be greater than the 10. And the little side of this. Uh, operator here, comparative operator, is pointing toward the x. So the x has to be greater, less than the 14. And the 14 has to be greater. Both things have to be true for this to be calculated. All right, now let's do our charting. We'll start with the base chart. And this, this is the third or fourth time we've done this. We use our norm.dist in 2010. We have our particular x comma, our mean, there's our mean, that's the same mean we've been using all along, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that cell reference, comma, the standard deviation, boop, I'm going to lock it, I'm going to hit the F4 key to put those dollar signs in to lock it, and we're doing not 1 for cumulative, but 0 for the height of the curve, that's the probability mass or, or density function. All right, control enter, and I can double click and send this down, now I can click in uh, the cell and control down arrow and see just like the last two videos we sent it all the way down to 24. Now in this video um, we're going to make a chart and I have some pretty fancy uh, formulas here to determine the labels. If you want to see how to do that you can go back and see the video uh, statistics number uh, Excel 2010 statistics video 58. Alright now the second thing here is we need to plot our additional column. This is for uh, the, air, the plotted area on the chart for our probability. Now, we have two things here. Now, the last two videos we used the if function. And what we usually said is, if their x is greater than or equal to, then show the probability. Two videos ago, we did less than or equal to. But now, what do we have to do? We have two conditions that must be met, the and, cri and criteria. Two things have to be met. Well, let's think about this. Equals if. Maybe I'll scroll over like this. Logical test. Again, the last two videos we had one, one logical test. But we have two logical tests. We need to check two things. Is it greater than or equal to 10? And is it less than or equal to 14? No problem. The logical test, you just have to use the and, A-N-D function inside the logical test. Now what's so polite about the AND function is it says, oh, you can have logical test 1, logical test 2, 3, whatever. We just have 2, remember, greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 14. Now the beauty of this is AND will say logical test 1, if it comes out true, 
and the second one comes out true, then the AND function will dump a, dump a true into the IF. All right, so you ready? Is this one greater than or equal to our lower limit, which is 10? And I'm going to lock that 10 with the F4 key, comma, and the second test that must be passed in order to show the probability in this column is particular x, are you less than or equal to the upper number? This is a way of doing between criteria. But don't get confused. There's two tests, and they most co both must come out true. That cell reference needs to be locked, so F4 as we copy it down. Now watch this. See the screen tip? It's totally polite. When I close this off with a close parenthesis, watch what happens. Oh, it jumps back to the if. Now this little thing right here is just either dumping a true or false into the logical test of if. And that's what the if needs, because remember, the if puts one of two things. Either show the probability in this column or show a blank. All right, so and meets um, the criteria for what we're doing here perfectly. Now I'm going to come to the end. Notice we're still in the logical test argument, so I'm going to type a comma. And now what do I want if the cell if it's true? Boop, the probability relative cell reference, comma, otherwise. And we've been using this double quote to show nothing, close parentheses. It's actually not nothing. It's actually an empty text string. All right, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And this is going to be even 10 times cooler than what we saw earlier with our above and below. Now look, there it is. It's 10. I'm scrolling down. Oh, and then there's 14, and it turns off. So everything below this four, above this 14 and below the 10 is a blank. So when we plot that column, absolutely perfect. And then again, the reason we use this construction here is if we come up and change this, which we will do on our chart, Notice these labels change also. Again, that video earlier, we saw how to do that. But now the probabilities change. And that's how we get a dynamic chart that changes all the time. All right, now I'm going to plot right here. I'm going to click on that cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, go up to Insert Area, and I'm going to select this one. I'm immediately with the chart selected, going to go up to Chart Tools Design Select, because we need to add this extra column and change the labels. So I go to Select Data. This is the real power in charting. Right off the bat, I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say, hey, please show not the default weird values. I want to see my actual x value. So I click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, click OK. Now I'm going to add. So I just edited this, and this one will work for both. But now I need to add our second. You can see the blue there, but we want some red in between, or red on the outside edges. No, no, we're going to do red in between. Add, series name, I'm going to scroll up. And again, these formulas there are going to show a label and the probability on the chart, which will be handy. Uh, series values, remember, you always have to highlight it and delete it. And then click in that first cell, G17, Control Shift Down Arrow. Click OK. Click OK. And there it is, totally amazing. Again, this chart gets thrown at the bottom, so I'm going to click on the edge. That's the Move cursor. Once it's selected, I cut Control X. Maybe paste it right there, Control V. Now, right now it's showing zeros because we haven't calculated our probability. I'm going to add a, actually, I'm going to delete these. Uh, I don't really want this at here. Those are our x values. Uh, back in this video here, we, sh we showed how to plot both x and z if you want those. I want a label up here, so I'm going to, I mean, a chart title, so I'm going to go to Layout, Chart Title, Above. Immediately with the chart selected, I click in the formula bar, type in equal sign, and I'm going to click in A1. Right click, and then the mini toolbar, something like 12. That's just so we uh, can base, it actually has the, the question. And notice this is a formula here. We saw how to do this in earlier classes. If I change this to 10, then everything changes. These are all formulas, everything. All right, again, I have a few earlier videos. But so we have our chart. There's our chart. The main thing we don't got to worry so much about this is how do we create 
the, the data points in, in Excel charts, as we mentioned earlier, you always have to put all of the numbers and plot them. It's not, this is, charting in Excel is never like a graphing calculator in your math classes. You have to plot all the numbers and then it knows what to do. All right. Now let's get busy. Now that we have our picture, let's calculate some probabilities. Okay, so we get the idea. We can see this. Now, here we go. Let's calculate our two Z's. We're going to see two methods of calculating uh, area between. We're going to, of course, see the norm.dist and then the norm.sdist. That S means standard normal curve, and standard normal, normal curves need Z. So I'm going to calculate my Z. All right, equals, open parenthesis, my particular X minus my mean, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key, close parenthesis, divided by my standard deviation, locked with the F4 key. Control Enter, and I'm going to drag it down. Now, this one is a simple chart, minus 1 and 1z. Now, you can remember from the empirical rule, without even doing any more calculations, what is the probability of getting a test score between 10 and 14. From our empirical rule, plus or minus one standard deviation, 68%, about 68%, and that's what this is. But we're going to change this so that it's not an easy number to calculate. You know, and it could be whatever you want. So, uh, and then there it is. You get that little picture there. Again, it's the between here. Let's change this to. Uh, All right, probability between these two. All right, here, let's go ahead and calculate this. Now, this notation here, notice the x, it, the x has to be bigger than the lower and smaller than the bigger. Now, I'm going to actually scoot this out of the way for a second or down here or something like that, because this. This formula is going to be longer than our other ones. And I'm also going to move these maybe over here, because I don't want them in the way. All right, you ready? Oh, well, let's think about this. What in the world do we do? What did we do earlier, right? We were always doing less than, so it was easy. We knew the charts went from cumulative, so from some negative infinity, some x, right? And we got all the probability there. Well, how are we going to do between? No problem. Check this out. Think of it this way. What if we plotted the upper end, 13.75? Well, the area in the, the function would give us the area from negative infinity all the way up to here. So it would literally be everything from this point backwards, all that area. Well, what if we do the low number? That's what we already did earlier, right? From here to here, no problem. From here all the way back is bigger then from here all the way back. So you simply subtract them. You always count the cumulative probability from of the big one and subtract from it the cumulative probability for the small one. Again, we're doing this in Excel, which is much easier than doing it from tables or some other methods. So this is how we learn it. It's the norm, and we're going to do the x's first, so we know norm.dis. Our x, remember, always do the bigger one first, comma, our mean, our standard deviation, and cumulative is 1. That gives us from negative infinity all the way up to our bigger. All right, so there's everything from here backwards. But guess what? We have to subtract from it the lower. It's all about area. We're subtracting two areas. So there's the, uh, then the mean and the standard deviation cumulative. And that is our probability. So I'm going to change this to uh, 12. Right, so we're just interested in that little bit right there, the probability getting from 12 to 13.75 is 0.3, so about 31%. All right, now let's see it with the Z's. So our Z was 0, because we had a 12, and 0.875. Our Z, same thing. Remember, 
with the z, we use the norm.s norm dist. We throw in a z, and it's going to give it probabilities. But they're both cumulative probabilities. So we say norm.s dist of the big z, comma 1, minus norm.s dist of the small z. And cumulative one. Now remember, these this this is brand new. This does not conform to the earlier version. And a couple video go, videos ago, we compared, but this cumulative argument doesn't exist in earlier versions of the norm s dis function. All right, so there we get it. Now, change this back to 10 and this to 14. That would make each standard deviation oh, above and below one standard deviation. Let's go 8 and 16, right? And there's our empirical rule, 95%. And you can see just a little bit of blue there, right? Maybe I should change that to 8, too. And later, when we do hypothesis testing, this will be a familiar picture that we have. All right, now what about this is the probability between these two? Well, if all of the area is 1, and we want the probability of this and this added together, this is actually or. Now, you don't, it, it is. We're saying, what's, I want to add these two together, right? So what's the probability of getting less than or equal to our 8? There's our lower, less than, or the probability of getting a 16 or greater, right? So this is an or. We simply 1 minus. And so that's the remaining probability housed there and there. All right, uh, and we saw how to do the same thing. We've been doing a lot to plot the base chart. And then we saw this new uh, two criteria if statement where we use the and to get greater than or equal to uh, the lower limit and less than or equal to the upper limit. And we copied that down. We plotted this chart. And then we did calculate our z's, but we did our norm.dist. Remember, bigger area minus smaller area. We also saw how to do it for the s, which is all about the z, the bigger area minus the smaller area. And uh, then calculate the probability in either tail. All right, in uh, our next video, We'll see a couple examples of finding x. All right, see you next video.